Hey, it's Faye. Time is really flying by this year and as a new season approaches, I can't help but feel this very sentimental feeling. I'm not really sure how I'm going to detangle this on camera, but the more and more I sleep on it, the more I ponder on these thoughts. It's time to kind of bring the conversation to surface and talk about it with you guys. This overall experience that I'm going to talk about today really hurt me. So let's unwind, do our skincare together, my holy savior, like how we used to. All of that being said, welcome to another I'm hurt skincare night. <laughs> Today's video is sponsored by Clarins. Minimalizing tonight's skincare, I've already accomplished cleansing and toning. I'm gonna go in tonight headstrong and start with the double serum by Clarins. A serum is basically the main character of your whole skincare routine. And I didn't know this, but applying moisturizer on top of your serum is the most effective way for absorption, which in return, you'll get better protecting skin throughout every layer. For me, I want to target fine lines and wrinkles as a concern. So by using this double serum as a benefit, I should be seeing visible firmer skin and tighter pores within a week. Okay, so I'm going to apply this using the clearance application method because it's going to deliver this serum the best and the most effective way possible and because it has lymphatic drainage benefits. So I'm going to pump this out onto my palms and as you can see, this has a dual chamber featuring water and oil. So once you compress it and dispense the two will combine. It's super important to rub this in your palms. Pat this gently but very firmly on your skin. Next, you want to drain by pressing your face inward to outward. Ooh. So I wanted to take this time to explain the lymphatic drainage benefits. By doing this portion of the clearance application method, we're improving circulation and deep puffing the face. What this does is clear blockage, allowing the best circulation and blood flow, of course, to strengthen our skin and our facial muscles. Of course, with the help of the double serum, this is gonna give us the most radiant complexion. This method was actually developed in the spas because it's the most efficient ways for your products to really soak in. It's the proper amount of pressure needed and I didn't even know that. I normally just like tap my skincare or rub it in. But skincare to me is where I take my time to really pamper myself. So now this is what I do. I love that this serum is good for everyone. All ages, ethnicity, skin types, even if you have irritated skin. So say your skin is super sensitive. Well, at least this serum is not heavy or doesn't feel thick for your skin. And I know that because whenever I use heavy serums, I wake up with protein deposits, the little bumps. That's not fun, and I haven't had that problem. Look how it glows, and this is literally the only thing I have on right now. Ooh, she is shiny, girl. The serum has 21 plant ingredients with turmeric as the hero, addressing my aging concerns. I love how Clarence have additional serums for most, if not all, concerns. So I'm gonna leave the link down below if you guys wanna check it out. Find a serum for your insecurity. Linda's getting home. Okay, so before we actually start this emo but empowering conversation, I'm gonna take a moisturizer and apply that right on top because like I said, there are amazing benefits that we're sleeping on. I can't express how impacted I've been by this big feeling I have inside of me triggered by fall. All these years, I thought I knew who I was, but no. Incorrect, because I became the best version of me last year. And the most amazing part is when you think you've found the best version of you, you then rediscover the best version of the best version of you. Of course, through that journey, you meet the worst version of you. You guys know I'm a very reflective person and not one day goes by without me analyzing how I could have done better or how I could have been better. And I know it sounds a little bit toxic, but it can be so beautiful at the same time. A year ago today, I was getting in my best shape and I know, here we go, talking about weight again. I wanna talk about this, honest and raw to those who I've connected with throughout this sensitive topic on my channel. This is an area of uncomfortable to a lot of us. These are thoughts we have within ourselves without anyone hearing and I want to make that aloud. Why are we embarrassed of it? Why aren't we talking about it? It's moments like those that I was aware of what was happening but I still play dumb. I still play naive. I think by now I've used it as a coping mechanism to just kind of play it off because I'm uncomfortable. Again, this was an overall experience that hurt me and I didn't know it hurt me that kind of way until I 
thought about it. I'm really good at blocking it out of my memory because it's embarrassing. People treat you differently because of your weight. The first time I was in Korea. Let's dive into that. And yes, I take eye cream and I put it in all the creases because like I said, my fine lines are not that fine. <laughs> of course, I was super excited and honored that I was picked as a creator to go to Korea. If you watched me for a long time, you know that I've always been into K-beauty, whether that's makeup or skincare. The thought of being surrounded by skincare and makeup that was represented by Asians, I was ecstatic. Okay, so this is where we start talking about it, but um, I obviously was my heaviest during that summer. I knew that Asia had different beauty standards. I mean, obvious, I'm Asian, but when you're actually there and you feel it, you really feel it. So I want to just claim that this doesn't happen just in Korea, it's all of Asia. But it just happened that that was the first country for me in Asia. I felt like there was a culture shock, even though I'm Asian and there's an evident defining line between beauty standards in the Western world and the Eastern world. I wasn't prepared and I grew up in an Asian household so this is nothing new to me. What I remember most are the stares. Sometimes I'd tell myself that they're only staring because I'm Asian. I mean, foreign because I'm foreign. And that is true, honestly, that is true. So I just kept to that. It didn't help that my hair was colored and fried. So that really added to the look fake. But um, my weight was definitely enough to attract stares. Girl, and comments, like we're not just talking, just stares. Even with people that I just met or were around, I'd get comments like, oh my God, you're so cute. Or even, oh, you're so big. And my favorite, fatty. I'm getting kind of embarrassed talking about this right now now I feel like my skincare is melting off of my eyes. Let's drain. <laughs> all of this away. <laughs> I knew I wasn't close, not even close to the beauty standard there. Far off the grid. But um, I recall one time I was shopping for skincare, as you do in Korea, and this girl and I came in contact. When we did, we stopped, right? And she looked at me, jaw dropped. Not even kidding. I felt like I did something wrong. It could have been a one, two, three second stare, but for me, the world stopped. It almost feels like an outer body experience. <laughs> I don't know, it's like if you don't fit the box or the checklist of what their beauty standard is, in Asia of course, you weren't beautiful. And not only was I considered too big and overweight, I didn't have the best skin. People around me or next to me would get compliments like, oh, you're so pretty, your skin is so nice, your skin is so smooth. How do you have such smooth, beautiful skin? And I'm there right next to that person just feeling so crumbled. I don't know how to explain it or express it, but I, I just feel embarrassed for myself. That means my skin is, you know, not it, sis. <laughs> I mean, I get it. My skin is rough, it's bumpy, I have acne, I have scars, I have large pores. The list goes on. I've heard it my whole life. I am tired of hearing that and tired of feeling like that's. Wow! What? I'm tired of. so shiny. <laughs> it's not tears guys, it's just the reflection. You see how shiny I am right now? I was tired of feeling like that was all of me. Like that's all I could offer. Offer? <laughs> okay, calm down, relax, relax. Oh my god. You see, I still get really sensitive talking about this because, you know, this sounds so lame, but why am I so emo with my eye cream? I just want eye cream with my skin. Oh my god. I just feel like I wasn't included. I try to say that so strong and fast. <laughs> my weight was heavy, my hair was fried, <laughs> my acne was apparent. It is what it is, I mean. It's funny how much pressure I felt, but if you go back and rewatch my very first vlogs in Korea, you can't tell. I was so good at concealing and being happy and joyful and just loving the new experiences that you can't tell I was having and facing those interrogations I had with myself at night. You know, I made the best out of that trip and I learned a lot, but I still go to sleep at night feeling these feelings because I couldn't avoid it and it just feels like I done something wrong and it sucks because it's just me. I feel like I'm doing something wrong 
by being me or just by looking like how I do. Viewers who stuck by me throughout this acne journey, skincare journey, and my weight loss journey, you can kind of see how I kind of messed me up and like toyed with me because I still get very sensitive obviously talking about these things. I wish I wasn't so sensitive to it but you can't put into perspective what people go through behind the scenes and that's with anything and anyone. It's just crazy to me because every time I go back to Korea, which I love going to Korea, I love K-beauty, I love being surrounded by things that I have passions for, it inspires me and makes me want to become a better creator. Being there actually makes me dream bigger. I say that to say that it's funny. Every time I go back, I get nervous hoping I can prove something to myself, prove that I'm better this time. I sound ridiculous. It takes me going to a country to prove to myself that I can be better. All right, probably why I kept going. <laughs> I'm kidding, but it makes sense. <laughs> Another big thing I wanted to talk about is how people treat you different because of your weight. I can recall two friends, no, maybe three at most, yeah, that treat me different now versus then. It's like suddenly I've lost all this weight and I guess I look prettier and I fit into the mold better. Suddenly, you want to treat me with more interest, but I know there's a different level of interest. I could be wrong, but it kind of feels like high school. Nothing about me ever really changed but my weight. I can't help but think that that's the reason. And it sucks to say this, absolutely, but there's some truth to it. I know for a fact that you would get it if you've gone through some kind of physical transformation and you just know people treat you differently from then and now. You know, as confident as we want to walk, with our head held high. We're still so conscious of our looks. We all are insecure human beings deep down. We assume people who stare at us are judging us. We birth our own insecurities soundly and the judgment of others do nothing but only enforce this idea. So suddenly when you don't feel this sense of judgment from those same people because you've changed, it, it hurts. You can't help but think that they only now want to get to know you personally because you fit the mold. I mean, I've always let things go in the past and I blame myself for it. I don't blame anyone else but me. I was known as that friendly kind girl. Oh my god. But come on, I was also this fluffy girl with a loud personality. I come off so extroverted, but honestly, I'm so shy. Like, if you know me, I'm shy. I try to keep the energy level up to here when I'm really like down there. And now I know why. It's because all I ever had was a personality to divert someone's attention from my looks. I'd rather people say, oh, she's not that pretty, but she's really nice and funny versus she's not pretty nice or funny. Okay, I'm gonna try to paint a picture in your head. You look to your left and you see a bigger girl. Looks very nice and friendly and kind versus looking across to your right, you see a pretty girl who is skinny and looks mean. Or, or intimidating, let's say intimidating. Who do you choose to sit with? Probably the girly on the left because she seems nicer. And I'm not trying to say that your weight determines whether you're nice or mean, but let's be honest, there is a stigma. I'm not gonna shy away talking about this because it happened to me. It's kind of like experiencing both ends. I'm not saying I'm anywhere close to being skinty, mean, or intimidating, <laughs> no. But I'm not as heavy as before and I am experiencing different treatments from the same people. By the way, I'm done with my skincare routine. She got the glass skin, girl, don't mess with her. My breaker. Where does this bring us? Here in the Linda fam, we do not judge you before, during, or after your physical transformation or even your mental or emotional transformation because queen, it's all about being stable on the inside. We do not treat people based off of their looks, their weight, their personality, Maybe they're out of two. And I want you to think about this. Let's have an honest conversation in the comments. Have you ever been the person to judge or have you been the girl sitting at the table on the left? Or maybe the girl who sat at the table on the right? I know we're not perfect. We all judge, let's be honest here. But listen, Linda, do not treat people differently or make them feel different. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it at all. If you stare, Next time, do better. You might think it's just a stare. Whoops, my bad. I didn't mean to stare. But to the receiving person, that stare stays with them for a long, long time. That stare causes the receiving end to think something's wrong with me. They take that to bed every single night. They take that embarrassment. They start convincing themselves that they're less. And I know that sometimes staring, people don't do it intentionally. They, they aren't even aware half the time that they're doing it, you know? Well, the other day, I commented on something that was kind of rude 
to my sister. I belittled her weight gain because she weighs a lot less than I do. Almost as if she had nothing to complain about because I weigh more, so does that mean I'm twice her problem? But by doing that, I took her right of feeling how she felt. I took her right of validating her feelings. Almost like your issues are smaller than my issues, therefore it does not matter, and therefore it is not valid or important. No. Absolutely not. After I pulled myself out of, you know, just unconsciously commenting on something, I apologized to her because I didn't mean to belittle her problems. I know better than that to make someone feel like their problems are less valued. But you know, we're all human and we do stupid things and say stupid things sometimes. <laughs> Be accountable for your actions. Okay, I am completely rambling. I finished my skincare routine a long time ago and I feel so much better. And it's such a weird psychological thing. So let's just ignore it for now, but thank you so much for just listening to me. Hopefully relating to this embarrassment I felt hurt over. I'm so proud of us for building this community where we can talk about weight, body image, skin, feeling not enough, feeling less beautiful. And that in itself has so much power. You guys have no idea. <coughs> Thank you again, Clarence, for sponsoring today's video. I'm gonna leave all the links down below, so check it out. Until next time, I'm sending the love. Bye!